guys, this is Jaws. Welcome back to another episode of In The Tank. Uh, if you're new to the show, my name is Jaws. I am a full-time music producer and a internationally touring DJ, you know, back when that was a thing. Um, and this is my podcast where I bring my friends on to talk about life and things going on in the world. And really at the end of the day, try to uh, give you guys information that you can use to better your lives, whether it's in a little way or a massive way. Um, and, and have fun while we're doing it. The episode that we're about to get into is one of my favorites that we've recorded so far. And just in case you're not aware, every single Thursday on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash jaws official is when we actually record in the tank live. Um, Thursdays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and so we've recorded a, a, a couple episodes, at least so far. And this is one of my favorites, uh, not just because it's one of the biggest artists that we've had on the show uh, to date, but also because he's one of my favorite people uh, just to talk to. And we also happen to grow up right next to each other. Uh, he happens to go by the name of Elenium. I'm sure even if you don't know who I am, you don't know who the podcast is, you probably are familiar with who Elenium is. He's one of the biggest artists in dance music at the moment. Um, he's been absolutely crushing it for the last God knows how long. Uh, really, you know, cultivating his own brand of really melodic, bass heavy, what I would almost call pop music. Uh, like I said, Nick and I grew up about five minutes from each other. We never knew each other until we both started doing music, and it's been really, really cool to see him grow uh, his his career and his music in the way that he has. Nick and I get along really well, and uh, we have a lot of things in common outside of music. And uh, you know, I've, I felt like he had a lot of knowledge and information that he could uh you know share with you guys that you would probably be really grateful for so in the episode obviously nick and i talk about life we take a tour around his brand new studio in denver and uh, we have a blast and i have a feeling that you're going to learn a lot from this episode uh with that said why don't we get into it boom boom look at that Everyone say hello to the one, the only. I call him Nick, but you probably okay. call him Elenium. GG's in the crooked. chat. Elenium's. Get those Phoenixes in the chat. Get lit. Do you have Phoenix emotes? I bet you do. I just saw one. There we go. Ooh, fire. Nice. Fire, fire, fire. So... We have better. Okay. So, obviously, you guys all know Elenium. I know Elenium. But just on the off chance that there is someone out there in the world, because obviously we're doing this live right now, Nick, but, uh, you know, parts of this interview will go on on my radio show, which is in 30, it's on 33 different radio shows across the world. Um, cool. And this is a podcast that'll go on, you know, Spotify podcasts, Apple, Apple podcasts, all that stuff. So there is, it's doubtful, but there is a possibility that someone out there listens to this and doesn't know who you are so why don't you just give a tiny tiny very quick little uh you know little intro how's how's it going how's it how, how's it how, how you doing you know what i'm saying i'm doing good but yeah i'm millennium i produce electronic music many types and it's going good quarantine life is uh it's been like pretty trippy but good i mean i just set up a whole, whole new like speaker system all day that took me like eight hours but i'm pumped i just finished yeah i mean you could give Time everyone life. a tour like you gave me earlier if you're if you're all excited about it just Dude, flip I'm that like, camera around this they came it came in a pallet it was like 700 i can't believe that you did all that shit on your own dude i had sean's help they're pretty good boom look at that dude sheesh yeah, what what nice. barefoots are those? The the these are the these are the stacks. So you got like the mini mains up top, and then the subs, and then there's a whole crossover on both both sides down there. God damn! I love this shit though. I love like geeking out and like learning. Like I'm just reading the manual right now. Yeah, I mean, so so 
you have the dream setup. I was actually I was talking to Joanne about this the other day because you know we're we're staying at her mom's house down in Orange County, which is cool because mm-hmm. you know we have a big yard for the dogs to run around, pool, hot tub, whatever. But I'm just using this random room and I have like a couple desks set up with like yeah. some monitors and whatever. Like I don't really have a studio going on. It's much more of a stream office than a studio. And like I'm getting a lot of music done, which is actually cool. It it almost feels like I mean that's what matters, dude. Yeah. yeah. But we have all this time at home and I could be spending time building my dream studio right now, but I'm not. And it sucks. Yeah, I mean, dude, I we went hard on this studio for like I mean, I've been in my house like two years and I didn't get to use the studio for uh, like 14 months of those two years. Jesus. So it was a, but it, I mean, it's so fun. It's got, you know, like I've got, I've got like a, it's really nice to just record a bunch of live stuff. You've got a whole like oh, 1891 sick. Steinway piano that sounds really nice. And then all this is like mic'd up through the wall. You can't really see it that's gnarly gnarly and and like here's here's the thing is it doesn't even matter if your studio is incredible or anything no it's 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 really about like and this is again what i was talking about with joanne is like i don't really care about having some perfectly built studio but i just want a place where i can put all my favorite things and have all my toys and just like a room that you go into and you feel excited to like be creative you know what i mean yeah me and Trevor said this guy worked in like an eight by eight shitty room with one shitty window that we just like put sound. We built our own sound sound panels and we put them in there and we worked there for like my first two albums. And so, yeah, it's not it's definitely not a necessity at this point. I just I love this stuff and I geek out on it so hard. Well, and now we have we're afforded the ability to be able to like do this shit that we love because we all are nerds at the end of the day you know what i mean like you don't you don't make electronic music if you're not a nerd so it's like do we need all of that stuff no but like it's it's is it cool and does it look sick yes yeah dude and that's part of the reason that you do it man and like if you and 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 this is another thing that kind of gets to me is like i don't know about you i'm i'm definitely a fucking homebody you know during quarantine i've had I've had no problem staying at home, being lazy, just sitting in this room all day working. But what I have noticed, and I didn't really realize it until I like kind of thought about it, is I've moved pretty much every single two years since I left my house in San Francisco, which we're going to mm-hmm. talk about in a little bit. But yeah. um, I've moved every two years because, or three maybe, but it's like, after that point, like I, I get like stir crazy, you know, and like, dude, you- I'm the same way. I was, ever since I was a kid, I mean, I think by high school I had moved every two years growing up. I, I think I was in 14 different houses by the time I was a freshman in high school. Holy shit! Yeah, so I like have that. This is the longest. I mean, I've been in Denver the longest I've ever been anywhere, and yeah. I love it. I'm like planet. I, it's so nice to actually be like chilling in in a place that i love the vibe i love the people yeah i get to kind of i kind of just like created my own life here after going through like a bunch of shit right really sick yeah i mean so that i guess that was going to be my question is like i know you are i'm sure have your dream home in denver but like you're not afraid of having that like oh my god i'm sick of this i have to go i have to go somewhere even if it's somewhere in denver not anymore dude. no okay well not with this with this studio and shit yeah i mean this is i mean i'm not i'm not in like the craziest insane like fucking mansion house i'm in like a really comfortable place and i just went hard on the studio i just went like i mean that's the dream dude it and yeah, th- yeah that's another thing because you know joanne and i are, are you know kind of looking at houses and you know kind of looking around and to me, it's definitely much less about, you know, the house itself. But like, you know, yeah. my 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 two things I always look for is are the is the kitchen sick? <laughs> and is there a room where I can build my dope ass studio? You know Do what you I like mean? Cooking? Yeah, I love cooking. And I'm it's like, like it, it's like for me, it's like, I've you know, I've lived in houses that have, you know, maybe they're nice houses. But mm-hmm. the kitchens are just like old and shitty and tiny, and like I'll yeah. just I'll never be able to 
to actually like do anything in there. So like I I I like I need like a super open, you know, whatever. It's it's such a you know, it's so yeah. extra. But I'm definitely like that <laughs> about uh, about my. So so what are you a, a big chef or are you? I don't cook at all. No, I cook like steak. I I got mastery of steak, and I can do like Hell a yeah. seared ahi tuna pretty well. But that's all you need, dude. Beyond that, it's pretty iffy. Yeah, I mean, so I'm I'm kind of like a jack of all trades. You know what I mean? Like I can't really yeah. cook anything well, but I can figure <laughs> out most stuff. Um, but the dude, one... I'll just go to a, I'll go to like a steakhouse and I'll eat the best steak of my life, and I'll just get fascinated like how the did this happen yeah right i'm i'm so on board with that shit dude yeah. it's you know it's funny because like the best steaks are the ones that are so simple like they're not doing any crazy like sauce on it it's just like the best cut of meat yeah. you just season it a little bit just right <laughs> and it's just the the perfect cook and like you know like when i go to mastro's i only get one steak and it's the fucking 130 dollar a5 wagyu fucking you know it's like i don't think i've had that bro it, i'm oh. a big ribeye fan okay i love a ribeye too ribeye. but i mean it it's just like you know the steak itself is tiny but it's literally the best bites of meat you'll ever eat in your entire life and like yeah. that is just like you were saying like i i literally after i eat it sit up at night thinking about <laughs> like how yeah, how did they do that but it's like there's nothing on it bro like it comes with sauces on the side but i don't even use them because the steak is that fucking good dude i really like the capital grill uh they have this like capital grill aged vinaigrette balsamic uh, -huh. uh ribeye yeah oh, fuck it's good yeah i tried to take i tried to take that one home yeah I that i'd say i got like a, a c plus <laughs> i mean it's, you know it's just like music it's all about repetition you gotta yeah, right. you gotta ruin a bunch of steaks to get that one that you're finally like, oh, I did it. I did it. I think I need to just get better steaks. Like I'll go to Whole Foods and get a steak, but it just doesn't. Like, do I need to go to some yes. store? Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, bro, you're in Denver. That's like the the new food capital of the planet. Like my We got breakfast and brunch on lock, that's for sure. I mean, yo, I'll I mean, I'm sure you've lived there long enough. You probably know, but um, my older brother lived in Aurora for like six years. Oh, really? And he's a huge, know. huge foodie, like a huge okay. foodie. He was like, you know, best friends with all these like, you know, crazy chefs in Denver. And he had like his whole like foodie scene. So like he knows every fire ass restaurant. So I'll, I'll yeah. hit him up and try to get the lowdown. I'm sure his places you already know, but I no, mean... I would I mean, I'm sure there's so many hidden spots here that I would never even know. Yeah. There's so many like mom and pop little spots that are just so dang. Yeah. Wooly music in the chat. He says, I'll Sup, teach y'all how to make the perfect steak. I'm sure he would. And by the way, if you are in the chat right now, feel free to drop your questions in here for old Nicholas. I know you guys probably hear me talking all day long. I've probably answered your questions 45 times, but you don't always get to see Nick on camera. So if you have any questions for him, please feel free to drop him in the chat. And yeah, I will. Chat? What, you, what you want to know? Yeah. I'm in this for a second. Tips this on layering super saws. That is, that is the, that is the. I went through it on a stream and it's up on my, there, it's on my stream. You can go, you can go literally look at all my super saws. Yeah. I mean, I should probably look at that honestly. Cause I, dude, I, and I've talked to Wooly actually about it is um super saws are my kryptonite dude like i i can either get them to sound perfect but then even when i try to put them in the mix then they're like kind of you know like they don't hit quite right and then i'll try to stack them a couple times and but you know what who fucking cares about super saws right now who fucking cares <laughs> dude that is for another another stream another time um i oh wow there's a lot of there's a lot of uh there's a lot of questions know, coming in. I'm opening the chat right now. Okay. So I, can I can read them to you too. Thoughts on carving out your own unique sound. I like that one. I mean, I think I think people take it a little bit too seriously. I think carving out your own sound is kind of like I mean, you do you take the music you love. You're you're obviously inspired by music. Um if you're producing music and you just take your favorite elements. So like for me, I love pop punk. I also love 
Porter and Seven Lions, and I love Bonnie Vare. And then you just fucking that I can hear. All the, I can literally you know? hear all of that. I mean, obviously, you know, people will it draw. It creates can, a new thing on its own. It's, yeah. it's weird. It didn't I, even mean to. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, especially at the beginning of Illinium, the the comparisons to Seven Lions and Porter were obviously, you know, very, very mm -hmm. prevalent. Um yeah. but you know, the more that your 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 uh catalog has grown and the more music that you put out, like I mean, I remember the first song that I ever and I guess this is a good segue into, you know, talking about Marin and the mm -hmm. old days. Um, but just so you guys know, Nick and I actually grew up like five minutes from each other. And never knew each other. Funny. And um, I found Illinium, I want to say in 2013 or 14, because um, mm -hmm. you did a song with, um, oh my God, what's his name? Uh, John, I can't, uh, uh, vocal oh, jo with Joni Fatora? No, no, no. Uh, British vocalist. Um, it came out on the Nest, or the Nest wrote an article about it. Oh, I'll be a reason uh, with Eden. With Eden, yes, Eden, one of yeah, my favorite yeah, yeah. vocalists ever. I found him oh, because so of that good. song, and I actually hit up Nick and was like, "Yo, who is that vocalist? He's amazing." And then we started talking, and that. That's so funny. And then he was like, "Hey, by the way, I think <laughs> we uh, grew up pretty close to each other." So yeah, Nick. Nick is obviously, you know, actually not obviously. No one would know, but you're a little bit older than me. I think you graduated what, like two years, three years before? Oh nine. Me? Oh nine. Yeah, and I was eleven. So yeah. um, we never knew each other growing up, um, and then we found each other through music, which is crazy. But my point in all of this is that that song was so not any of that it was like super super almost like lo-fi you know yeah, what i was, mean that was a i felt like i mean i just had this i had the intro which i liked which was kind of like floaty sine wave distorted but it was like so simple and just a dope beat and yeah. then and then eden had put out so eden was ending the eden project and he was starting eden which is just like the singer songwriter version right and he put all these like random whips out and there was one sample in one of those whips that was like the I'll be a reason tag. And yeah. I was like, dude, can I use that? That is so good. And he was like, absolutely. And then it, it, it was definitely a more unique song than, than a lot of the stuff. I, but it, I was still... Yeah. But I mean, I, I almost hear some of, you know, that, you know, older stuff coming into the newer stuff, like yeah. where, you know, it's, uh, you know, I mean, I went to the show at Staples Center and I got to see, you know, everything Millennium from, you know, older stuff, newer stuff, everything in between. Um, but like, I definitely hear the pop punk influences. I mean, everything has fucking guitars on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love that shit. That's what I listen to like every day. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like me. You know, I'm a metal kid. I yeah. grew up, you know, I wanted to be in a metal band and play guitar on stage. But then I found dance music and I'm super happy that I did. Mm -hmm. But like, you know. That's one thing I haven't incorporated into my music a ton. And honestly, I don't really plan on going that crazy on it just because there's people, you know, like Sullivan King and Kazo yeah. that are really running with that shit. And I don't, you know, but there's I, so much of the other metal stuff, like the breakdowns, dude. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. But like, how do I, I, I can't bring breakdowns into like house music or dubstep. Cause then if you yeah. try to, if you try to emulate breakdowns in dubstep, then you become like, uh, Murata or Mastodon, you know, yeah. and like that was me back in the day. True. But like my my music now is so different. So I'm trying to figure out a way for me to you know bring that world into my music world naturally. But like yeah. at, at the same time, I don't want to. Um, what was I going to say? I don't want to. You know, I'm a big believer in you know everyone has their own lane and kind of like you were saying, you know, like. You weren't trying to do anything different with your music. I wasn't trying to do anything different with my music, but I was just yeah. doing me and you were just doing you and mm -hmm. you weren't trying to do what someone else was doing. And so, you know, regardless of, you know, if I sounded like AC Slater or you sounded like seven lions or Porter, we, we really sounded like ourselves and like we yeah. cut through and like, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very apparent. Yeah, I mean, um, you can take any music, even my influences. You know, you look at Seven Lions or Porter, they have their influences. Yep. You know, with Seven Lions, it can be like any trance, you know, above and beyond. 
you know, Xylent was doing similar stuff. And then you have Porter, which is like, we're at world's time. M83 was like so good. That's my yep. favorite show at Red Rocks I've ever seen. Sick. It was so good. Um, but I, I feel like, and there's, there's no harm in any of that. It's just inspiration creating. Inspiration. That's, I mean, there's nothing original in the world anymore. Nothing. Everything, everything is repurposed and reused. And it's kind of like yeah. about, you know, instead of being a carbon copy of your influences, it's about being like a melting pot of your influences. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, a question in the chat that I actually would be very curious to, to hear your answer on is, uh, Nick, on your live shows where you're not using CDJs, what are you doing on stage? So I have, uh, there's kind of a lot that goes into it pre-show, um, but I use Ableton for my live show. Oh man, this is a kind of complicated question. <laughs> so I have, uh, I've got for my guitars, if you guys, it's actually kind of nice with can show you more. So I have, these are Kempers, which are guitar. Uh, it's an, it's like a, Forget the profilers so they have like pretty much any tone you ever want so it's it's basically and i'm i'm asking based on yeah. my own curiosity because you know again it's kind of like a, a hardware guitar rig yeah so okay way better tones. okay cool so and what's really dope is you can save profiles in there and then in ableton i can map those profiles so i can like match my my tones to my actual songs right and then in Ableton, as my set is playing, my MIDI, I can MIDI activate what tone is going to happen when. So, so I don't it's need like any a foot it, pedals. Exactly, it's like a stomp box that automates itself. Exactly, and it also can like shut sound off. Like if I want during a build, I'm going crazy, and I don't want like any sound when the vocal happens. I can just turn it off completely and then bring it back in on the drop. That's crazy. And then I route all that. Um, I have like. <clears throat> I have that sort of automation with the drums I'm playing have, uh, you know, EQ automation to, you know, if I'm, if I'm building, I don't want all the lows to just like be super present by the time I drop. So I'll EQ right. a little, a little high pass filter that comes up. So I don't have to be like turning knobs while I'm drumming and shit, which is impossible unless I did a foot switch, but fuck that. Um, yeah. So, so, so that what you're doing most of on stage is either playing guitar playing the pads and then triggering clips Trigger. yeah. so i i'll split up um i'll split up a bunch of like vocal chops onto my midi fighters and then i'll trigger i have four pages that cycle based on where i am during the set okay so so you're not doing and i think this is a uh uh and what's the what's the right way to put this a misconception from a lot of people mm-hmm. that you know they they hear ableton set and they think, okay, you're, you know, doing the dead mouse version where, and I don't even think yeah. dead mouse does this anymore, but like where you have your stems and you like start a song and then you mix a song and you stop a song. No. So it's, it's more I of a linear I thing. Stems. I don't do stems. It, yeah. I do my stuff in the arrangement. Have, view. Yeah. And I have all edits of stuff that have things removed. So like no guitar and fractures, no Tycho drums and fractures because I play those. No piano in any of my songs because Tre- Trevor plays that. Right. So it's like a lot of time going into it. And then I have like side change channels that pretty much follow the beat of every song throughout the whole set. Crazy. That interrupt the live instruments while I'm while they're playing. Man, that is <sighs> plus all the time code. I mean, yeah. And that's honestly the best reason to do a live show, in my opinion, is like, you know, we we did like, you know, bits and pieces of time code on my last tour, which mm-hmm. is actually getting a lot better for freeform DJ sets because of the the advances oh, that dude, totally. um what's it called? Uh oh my god, uh uh what the fuck is that program called? I've never used it. I know what you're talking show about. Show control. That. Show control. Yeah. Um so you That's know just tight. Yeah, basically we're able to time code every MP three in my show. And like, you know, I could like start an MP3 and then like switch to another one and And it'll trigger that time code from that song. It's really cool, but it's also not perfect. And like also at the end of the day, like especially when you're doing a live show, like you're performing a show. You're not there to be a DJ and like do things on the fly. 
you know, yeah. like you're, you're giving kids the best show possible. And I wish I could do that more with my music. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and it, it, I mean, I love doing both dude. Like if I'll do, if I do like three or four months of straight live shows, I get so stoked to go do DJ sets again. And yeah. Then, yeah. Like, totally. Totally. But like, you know, uh, for me, it's like when you're talking about the, like the Illinium like show or like the Jaws show, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I would much rather it be something like I did on this tour where everything was planned basically to a T. I wish I could do more planned to a T. I almost tried to do an Ableton set, but it just didn't feel natural. Cause like, I don't have a bunch of drums. I don't have a bunch of guitars in my songs. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Just stand up there and be a dingus. You know, yeah. like it's, I love that you say dingus, dude. If I thought I was the only one that says dingus. Nah, dude. Dingus, like my- dingus squad is, uh, is, is large, bro. Um, how did Nick and Trevor meet? That's interesting. So we, yeah. When was this? I moved down to Denver in like 2013 I met Trevor in, I think 2013, we were getting, uh, I was kind of getting like production lessons. I was getting critiqued by this guy named Chris Cox. He goes by Omega. Okay. And he he was also mastering. He taught me how to master. He's the fucking. Oh, but sick, dude. Like, Illinium hosted me? Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. That guy's tight. Um, but yeah. Chris was mastering both mine and Trevor's music. And he was like, yeah, Mm -hmm. you guys should meet up. We met up, made a song that day. And then we moved in together like two weeks later. Wow. Love at first sight. It was love at first sight, man. That's amazing. Because like, I, I, I didn't know either, you know, just like chat. Like I didn't know if you guys met like a little bit into the project or, and it was like, Oh, like we make similar music or whatever. But like you guys have been grinding together for like a minute. Oh, the whole time. Yeah. I mean, to me, the whole time, pretty much. I mean, if anybody knows my music way back then, Drop Hearts Part 2 was like the first first thing we just cranked on. That's so, crazy. That's tight. Yeah. And I mean, having that, you know, whether it's one person or like a group, because when I was, you know, going to Icon and, you know, uh, really trying to figure out my, you know, self musically, you know, basically almost a year after leaving you know, high school and then dropping out of college, I always lived with, and even when I was in college, I somehow ended up living with musical people always. And like, just having that like community around you of just people always being creative all the time. Like, I I don't think that there's like, and even, you know, okay, cool. We're in quarantine now, whatever. But like having that, you know, when I was a kid and I didn't really know anyone else who made dance music, like I used forums all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So like whether YouTube it's YouTube is my life. Yeah, YouTube also. See Kyle says I need a podcast series. Well, guess what, buddy? This is it. <laughs> You're watching the podcast series. It. Yeah, this is the inaugural episode of In the Tank with Jaws, my new podcast series, bro. I love In the Tank too. That's so it's good. Um I really want to show people the the flyer, but honestly, I just set up this whole new scene where you can see both of us talking in the chat. So I don't want to break anything right now. I'm just gonna. <laughs> but uh, it looks good. I did that uh, in about 35 minutes with my remedial Photoshop skills. Uh, like I was saying before we, you know, actually started the interview, I've taken a lot of time to like get back into things that I used to love. Because um, little known fact, kind of, you know. But uh, before I was doing music full time, full time, even though it was always my number one, I actually, you know, in high school and college was doing documentary films. So, um, yeah. So like at at TAM, which is the high school I went to in Marin. uh, And I only say that because Nick knows um, he went to a different high school. It's okay. It's whatever. (laughs) Um, But uh I was in a documentary film program where we did like full on professional documentaries. And then I went to film school in college. And so, you know, I knew how to use, you know, video editors super well. I used to do a lot of Photoshopping. I even did like web design and that kind of stuff, just like full on nerd shit. You know what I mean? And because we're just stuck at home, you know, I can only make music for so long every single day and, or play video games, you know, like, I love playing video games. I know you love playing video games. We'll talk about it in a little bit. But at a certain point, it's like, 
I don't want to make music anymore and I don't want to play video games anymore, but I want to do something creative or like beneficial to my life. So I've been getting into, you know, video editing again, Photoshop, whatever, which is helpful for, you know, running a Twitch stream. But um, what have you been doing outside of music? Um, and outside of video games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that was a given. That was a given. We already know. Everyone already knows the Valorant God himself. I actually, dude, I played Valorant Heavy for like a week and a half. I cannot get out of Tarkov. I oh my God, I forgot. That's your game, dude. Tarkov, bro. I love it so much. I, so, dude, and they're starting a wipe right now. I actually been slowing down video gaming because I've been trying to get outside and do kind of some activities that I never really get the chance to do when I'm touring. And right. Like, I grew up, I, I really like golfing. I feel like it's, I'm not that good, but it's like so nice to just get outside and have like four hours of straight sunlight. Yeah. Um, but I've been doing that, just like binging TV shows and then like setting up studio shit. Yeah. Out on that stuff. God, I'm so fucking jealous, dude. I just like, right now is such a horrible time to buy a house, but like I literally like. Is it? I, I don't know. How's the, how's the market there? I mean, the market is fine, but it's just like, what's gonna happen? Wait, is that Maybe a six month? Is that a path water bottle? Yeah, but I'm spitting into it. I know, but that's fine. You drink out of it at one point. <laughs> at one point, I did. Yeah, path gang, dude. <laughs> it is nice. I don't know why I like it so much. It's got nice. I feel like it's wasteful because it's metal. No, it's, it's the better. opposite. It's recyclable. Got it. Well, what you're supposed to do is like I refill these. I only had ten of them. Like I got a pack of 10 um, and then we just refill them and keep them in the fridge. Cause like oh, when you do that great. with plastic bottles, the water kind of tastes like shit yeah. and like the plastic degrades. But like, this is like, you know, you could just like, this is essentially a cheaper version of one of those, like, you know, big boy fucking canteens that you carry around all day. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm recycling it in my own way. Yeah, you are. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. still around. You haven't thrown it out. Yeah, no, I it's been probably too long. I should probably throw it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put water in it now. Uh, no, might unless be. I'm trying to really screw somebody over. Yeah, or you're just trying to get real gnarly. Yeah. You're just about that yeah. life. I've yeah. I've done that before, not on purpose, but oh, I, me too. Dude. It's oh, the God. worst. See, and that's why oh, I hate. I... That's why I hate dip, dude. There's nothing good. Yeah, that's... just empty it out after you're done. Yeah, I just no. I'm not. Dip is fucking bad, dude. I I've been doing it since I was like 15. I need to fucking quit. But it's were, were you, did you play baseball? Is that what it was? I played lacrosse. You played lacrosse. lacrosse. That's what it is. Yeah. See, yeah. I I stopped playing organized sports like that before the age where I wa I got into doing bad things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I never got into you know dip. I I, I went straight to cigarettes. You know, yeah. which is why. Probably now I'm on on these fucking things. Is that a regular jewel? It's it's you know it? it's like it's from this brand called Okami. It's just okay. you know a, a a nice little icy grapey fucking vape. I mean, but mm -hmm. it's like I don't know, dude. I, I guess the best thing we could do is just not do nicotine. But that one day, one day. I always told myself whenever I turn thirty. I'm gonna quit, but that's in like six months. So, uh, oh fuck. damn! <laughs> Wait, when when's your birthday? December 26th. December. Okay. Wow. The day after Christmas. Was, was that was that sick or horrible as no, a kid? No, sucks, dick, dude. Everybody gives me half Christmas, <laughs> half birthday present. Not to be selfish or anything, but it's my fucking birthday, and I get yeah. To yeah. I mean, yo. So it if it makes you feel any better, Joanne's birthday is December 30th. So oh, yeah. she had Same situation. Yeah. Well, and now Joanne and yeah, I jo exactly. So Joanne and I's wedding anniversary now is December 2nd. So okay. December is our wedding anniversary. It's her Christmas. birthday, Christmas, yeah, and then New Year's. And then like 2 months later is Valentine's Day, dude. It's kind of a lot. And then you got a big drought until December again. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> like I don't even know what to do half the time. I'm just like, yo, just like w whatever you want, just like get it, and then you know I'll pay, <laughs> I'll pay for it, or like just tell me what you want because that's Dude, so I'm much. Dude, I'm the worst. I would like manipulate my parents into getting me a half birthday present because they had me on Christmas. I mean, that's <laughs> that's that's low key fair. That's low key I fair. I think so too, dude. Yeah, 
I mean, that's, you know, I mean, it, it, it depends, you know, because it's like someone could look at that and be like, oh, that's kind of selfish or whatever. But like, yeah, that's also a person who probably got a birthday present and a Christmas present, bro. Like, <laughs> you don't know how it feels. I, I mean, know, they don't. Um, OK, enough enough about birthday presents. Um, I want to get into something that I spent a lot of time designing today just for this podcast, just for you. Nicholas. Just for me. Just for you. And it's something that I like to call Quick Bites. Quick Quick Bites. bites. Uh, The name is subject to change. But for now, (laughs) that's what we're rocking with. Okay. So, based on my knowledge of you, based on the fact that we are both from the same area of the San Francisco Bay Area, um, I put together a couple quick fire questions and it's going to be, obviously there's a giant or on the screen. You can see this, right? Okay. You have, yep, I you got have you. The, okay, cool. So I'm going to give you two options and you have to pick between one or the other. All right. Okay. It's five questions, quick fire. You're not allowed to think about it. You just got to go for it. All right. Okay. Got it. Question number one, Bill Graham. Or Red Rocks? Red Rocks. Wow. That was quick. Not even a thought. Honestly, I hope my San Francisco homies don't get mad, but fuck. It's, you guys got to go to Red Rocks. I know. I know. Honestly, dude. And like, okay. I never lived in Denver. My, like I said, my brother lived in Colorado forever. I've been there a ton of times. I love Colorado so much. Yeah. Nowhere close to San Francisco. But if I had to pick between the two, I feel like I'd have to pick Red Rocks too. You know what I it's mean? It's just... It's, dude, I've always wanted, it'd be so sick if they put a Red Rocks type, like, venue in, on Angel Island or, like, on Marin Headlands or something like Yo, that. Yo, we were talking about that at the, at the fucking amphitheater in Marin where they do the, 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 what's it called? The mountain yeah, play or like, whatever? You need, like, 10K and no sound. No, no, no. Yeah. Which definitely God, wouldn't happen up that. there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, the, the Bay Area and especially Marin has, like, some of the most incredible like outdoor just space yeah in the world i don't understand why they can't Even do it towards like mere beach or stinson or any of that i mean there's only one tiny road in but yeah so um, much sick land so i feel like a lot of people are asking why this wasn't red rocks versus the gorge and just so we're clear nick and i both grew up in a place called marin which is right next to san francisco but he has now lived... How long have you lived in Colorado? Like 10 years? 2011, yeah. It's almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of these questions, it's actually only really two. This one we just did, and the next one uh, are kind of San Francisco versus Colorado. Because these are questions that I, you know, pose to myself. Yeah. So, that one was pretty straightforward. Hopefully... I don't know. Red Rocks versus the Gorge is a hard one. Yeah. That would be tough. I would probably choose Red Rocks just because of the convenience aspect. Like, I was about to say the same thing. It's 25 minutes for me. I just drive them there. Well, the gorge is like, goddamn. I mean, even if you live in Seattle or something, the Gorge is a fucking drive, dude. But the camping aspect of the Gorge makes it really tempting to choose that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, uh, you don't just do a show at the Gorge. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. a whole thing. You can just do yeah. a show or multiple shows at Red Rocks. And it's like, yeah, like everyone, you know, people will fly from everywhere to go to Red Rocks. But also, you know, the whole Denver community is just like, yeah, Red Rocks bet. If you it's live insane. in Seattle it's- and someone's at the gorge, you're like, okay, I got to plan this shit out like six months in advance so that I can mm-hmm. make sure, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, now, all of this being said, um, Mountain I have View. I, I have Somebody it. asked about Mountain View. Have you? Has there been any actual shows like at Shoreline Amphitheater proper, like the real amphitheater? Uh, Not the parking lot. I mean, I dude, I haven't been to the Shoreline Amphitheater since I went to Warp Tour when I was in high yeah, school. Dude. I went in high school too. I mean, it's sick, but it's seating, and I think it's like twenty five thousand capacity. Yeah, it's pretty big. Um, Alchemy did it there. They did it in the amphitheater? That's interesting. Was, like, the whole lawn packed and shit? 
I thought what that they you? did the parking lot, but maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> Ooh, that's a hey. great one that just came into the chat. It's not one that I have, but I should have done it. Andre Nicotina or Mac Dre? Oh, wow, oh, fuck Mac Dre. I mean, that's yeah, tough. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The the pff, God, that is so tough. I mean, yeah, like. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, you have to go Mac Dre there, but, like, Andre Nicotina has some of the absolute best rap songs of all totally. time. It, it's it's un, undeniable, dude. I used to be so into the hyphy shit back in high school, dude. Dude, we grew up in fucking Marin, yeah. bro. It I happens. Got, I got deep. Yeah. Fun fact that no one will believe, but you can fucking Google it. Tupac Shakur went to my high school. Yep, he did. He Facts. grew up in Marin City, right? Uh, for like a moment, I don't think he grew up there his whole life, but he definitely went to Tam for like a year. Uh, Tupac or Biggie? Tupac all day. Tupac I mean, yeah. Too. Keek to sneak, honorable mention for sure. E40 yeah. or Mac Dre? That's, I don't even fucking. I, don't I really know. like Zion I too. Zion I is one of my favorites. Yo, Zion I did my high school, uh, fucking prom, bro. What? That's yeah. So and it's so funny because, like, that was right around when I got into producing and got into dubstep and all that kind of shit. And Zion I's DJ is, oh fuck, I can't remember his name anymore, but he was like about the EDM shit. Yeah, so, I mean, he did that song with Minnesota. That, that, yeah. I think it's, it's so good. Yeah. Float? Some I, float? It's something like that. Um, Amp Live, that's his name. Thank you, Benny Shoes. Uh-huh. The Benny Shoes, dude. Lincoln Park or One Direction? Is that a joke? Lincoln Park. Not yeah, wait, what? They're not even in the same ballpark. Okay. Ryan Tedder from wait. One Republic. Oh. Wait, Lincoln Park or One Direction? What? Did they mean One Direction? Or... Ryan Tedder. One Direction is that uh, like Harry Styles. Yeah, wait. The, uh, Lincoln Park or band. One Direction or One One Republic would make more sense. One Direct What? 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 Michael Bagger Dasik. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. Oh man. Okay. Um Bay Area Festival, Jaws Alinium and Danny from Sudden Death. Or also from Void. That would be fire. Also, who could be added on there just while we're is talking Danny about Danny from the Bay? Uh San Jose. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so is Getter. Um Wait, what? Oh, I knew Getter was from San Jose. Yeah, and then uh, Dr. Fresh, Tony, is from yep. Tiburon. I knew Tony from middle school. Yeah. Um, who else? I know there's more. Um, oh, fuck. I can't remember, dude. There's a lot of good producers that come out of Marin, though, dude. I don't know what it is. Something in the water, oh, bro. Uh, T-Mass. T-Mass went to Redwood, I think. Oh, yeah. T-Mass went to Redwood. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Anyways, we've only done one question of what's supposed to be quick bites. This right. is this is very slow bites, dude. All right, question number two. I really hope that you know both of these places. If you don't, I'm going to be super upset with you. Okay. Pizza Orgasmica or Cosmos in Boulder? Uh, pizza Orgasmica. Whoa! Ding, ding, ding. 100%. I mean, same. If it was Denver, if it was Denver Pizza Company, I would go Denver Pizza Company. Okay. Um, I've never had Denver Pizza Company, but I know when I would go to Boulder to hang out with my homies or just any time I'm in Colorado ever, which seems to be Cosmos. pretty frequently. Yeah, I mean, Cosmos with the spicy ranch is a vibe, dude. Like, I mean, okay, <laughs> Cosmos pizza itself, maybe not, but the spicy yeah, ranch, like, like... Yeah, the spicy ranch is lit, but I like thin crust more. Yeah. Generally. And Pizza Orgasmica is, like, what I had. Oh God, P straight. bro, Pizza Orgasmica. Honestly, the one thing that I miss the most from Marin that I I need to open in Los Angeles is Soul Food. Did you ever fuck with Soul Food? What? Not really. What? No. What's wrong? What with I miss you? from the Bay. What I miss from the Bay is fucking Gordo's. Gordo's bet. And there's this uh, Philly che Philly cheesesteak place on Deviz and like Sutter. I think it's Sutter's or Pine or something. God damn, that shit is fire. 
Yeah, I'm. I mean, God, there was so much good food. I, I see. Here's the thing: when I was going to San Francisco, I was such a broke ass high school kid. I never even really got to enjoy. Like, I, all I would do is like go to Hippie Hill. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. With like 20 bucks that I found around my house. I would do that like every <laughs> single weekend. You know, that was like my my thing. You know, we would like go to uh, Sausalito or not not Sausalito, wherever the fuck the ferry terminal is. Uh, yeah. They, Larkspur. Somebody asked if it has a yellow sign in the front. Yeah, it does. What, Pizza Orgasmica? Yeah, it's right there. No, the uh, the the Divisadero. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Esso knows what's There's up, I guess. Dank ass burrito place right next to it I, I fuck i forget the name of it i haven't or, been in a yo, while what what's the street in san francisco it's not gary that has like all of the most fired dumpling spots like the hole in the wall dumpling spots i i feel oh, like i don't really know what, i feel like it starts with a g and i can't remember what it is but whatever it doesn't matter on to the next things are about to get crazy but this third question is kind of just like a whatever. It's just it's just thrown in there. We'll see how you feel about it. This All one right. is more personal to me, I guess. But we'll see how you feel. The next Quick Bites question is... Chipotle or Qdoba? Chipotle. Okay. I need to get, a, I need to get like a, a sound so that when I hit the check mark, it goes bing. You know what I mean? <laughs> um... By a long shot. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but honestly, okay, so here's the thing. Every time that I come in... I like in, how this is your personal question. <laughs> well, it was just, I was thinking about things that I know both from home and from Colorado, and for some reason, every time I go to Colorado, I end up getting Qdoba. I don't know Why? what it is. There's hella Qdoba. Dude, the original Chipotle is like right down, it's, it's close to me as fuck. No way. Yeah. Crazy. Because a DU student started Chipotle. Oh, yeah, that's right. I think they we had that much, conversation. Yeah, well, last from time what I was I've there. Heard, the, the word on the street is they stole the idea from Illegal Pete's. If this was Chipotle or Illegal Pete's, that would be quick bites. All right, Chipotle or Illegal Pete's, go. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Too hard to decide. Depends on the day. Right I mean, now, that's, but that's not even fair, though, dude. Illegal Pete's is like fucking sandwiches and shit. No, Illegal Pizza's burritos. The best case. Oh, wait. Of, what am I thinking uh, about? Uh, maybe Chiba Hut? Chiba Hut. That's what I was thinking of. Fucking fire. I literally just ate Chiba Hut like 30 minutes ago. Oh, God. I'm so upset. Yeah, so, so basically when, I, when I'm when i in Denver, I either eat Qdoba or Chiba Hut or both. Like, those are like... And I don't know why it's Qdoba. I think it's because... That's so funny. So, so, so one of my homies' houses that I always stay at because he lives in Golden, like, you know, 15 minutes from the rocks. Mm -hmm. um, on the way to his house from DIA, like, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes from his house, we're off the plane for like 20, 30 minutes at this point. We're hungry. There's always a Qdoba right there. So it's like become, yeah. it's become like this like thing. And I didn't know if Qdoba was like a like thing in Colorado because I never really see it anywhere else. I definitely think I hear more about Chipotle. Well, I mean, that would make sense considering that it was started there. Okay. No more softball questions, my dude. These right. next two are fucking zingers. Got it. Fucking zingers. Are you ready? Yes. Your next Quick Bites question is, said the sky or dabbing? That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Go. It's Quick Bites, dude. You got to do it. Child. I'll pick the child. The child? Yeah, they'll have a child and I'll pick the child. Oh, they'll have a child and you'll pick the child. Oh, <laughs> come on. Yeah, come let's double on. check for Both amazing humans. Where's my wife? I've known Trevor for sign? longer yeah, and bro. Trevor taught me mu like literally taught me how to do music, so I mean but Dabin Sounds also like it's a pick for Trevor. Ding 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 ding. But... Sorry, Dabin, you suck, dude. <laughs> oh, God. You heard it here first on In the Tank with Jaws. Elenium <laughs> hates Dabin. <laughs> you should clip it. I'll show Dabin when he comes over. They're coming to check my speakers out here soon. That's a, it's it's ironic because one of the most played clips on my channel is of Dabin teabagging you in Valorant during your tournament. Wait, is a oh god, really? <laughs> that was our entire team's whole goal was just to kill you and get the teabag done, and that was it. <laughs> 
You guys still not get, did not get the dub. No, we didn't. We were close though. We were close. It was I, not. Oh, you guys came back pretty well. Yeah. Well. Oh no, no, no. You know what was close was when we played against Christian. Oh really? You guys wrecked us. Everyone on my team under we got wrecked by the next team though. Yeah, yeah. That team was that team was fucked up. But on your team, everyone underestimated Pokey. I don't know why. They were all like, sick. dude, is she is she even going to be good? Doesn't she play League of Legends? I was like, bro, she's a pro, like the most pro of all the streamers. You know she's going to be sick. And she like top fragged your team for a long yeah. time. So shout out to you, Pokey. <laughs> um, okay. So you you chose Trevor, even though you didn't. But the chat chose for you. <laughs> um, all right. This one is going to be even even tougher. Are you ready? Oh, God. Prepare yourself. Take a deep breath. I'm not prepared. Your next Quick Bites, final Quick Bites question of the day. Peanut to Weenut or Rocket? Peanut. Whoa! That was Peanut so my, quick, dude! My Whoa. dog. Rocket. Wow. Whoa. Man, no love for Rocket, dude. No. That's rough. He's also been a bit of a shithead today. <laughs> so I'm a little bit angry at him. I mean, okay, don't get me wrong. Peanut is the best. But, um, I mean, you know, you get a new dog and you're obsessed with it. And, like, so is it not oh, your dog? I'm obsessed dog? with Rocket. But, no, Rocket's Sean's dog. Oh, really? So Sean lives here too. Oh, well then that's so not even fair. Joanne was like, oh look, Nick got a new dog. It's Rocket. Look at how cute it is. It's fucking it Sean's dog. Who dog. cares? Yeah. Sean doesn't know how to be a father, so. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. Okay. So bonus round question. Uh, I didn't really have the pictures to make this Sean one happen. Sean is my, pa is my uh, he's my manager by the chat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking shit about the managers is the name of the game. Yeah. I feel like every time someone comes up to me and they're like, oh, Mo Shalizi this, Adam this. I'm like, yeah, those guys suck, dude. <laughs> they're like, wait, what? I'm like, no, like, I'm kidding, but like, I have to deal with them every day, you know? <laughs> um, okay. I shit on Sean in person every day, though. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you have it. to. You have to. Uh, Sean, I know you're watching right now. I saw you on the Illinium channel. We, we love you. I love you, Sean. Whether whether Nick does or not, it's you know, it's okay. You still have it's me. A no. It's it's a no for me, dog. Okay, so bonus question. Just because I couldn't figure out pictures for this one, and I was getting really tired of setting this up in OBS because it honestly was a giant pain in my ass just to do this. <laughs> it was so much work. So that's just how much I care about you, Nick. That is how much. I care. You did a good job. You did a good job. Uh, next time there will be sound effects. It'll be much more, uh, you know, exciting. But, okay, <laughs> bonus question before we're done with quick bites. Would you choose dogs or ever having a career again, ever? Oh, my God. <sighs> right? Dude, I can't, that can't be a quick... I, like, I don't have a thought. I don't have a quick thought on that. I know. I mean, in my in my heart's heart, I want to say I choose dogs. At this point in my life, I'd probably choose dogs. But like, also, you need your career to have your dogs. You yeah, know. But do your dogs get killed? Are my dogs gonna get killed for this? <laughs> <laughs> Am I sentencing my dogs to death right now? Oh man. Um. I don't know. It's just like no, like they don't die. Like the they go. Do I to get good... to visit them? No. Oh fuck, man! It's almost like it's almost like you wake up in a world where you never had dogs and they never existed. You know what I mean? Well, if that's the case and they never existed, then I wouldn't have been missing. Yeah, but you know how much you would miss them right now. Yeah, but I'm okay with the memory wipe. I guess that's okay. So that's the only way it works is if you have a memory wipe and you just don't even remember how awesome dogs are, then, then, then music it is. But yeah, knowing what I know now, I feel like I would have to choose dogs. 
There's just no two ways about it. Dogs yeah. are definitely way doper than humans. For um, sure. Yeah. I you know, if I guess if I had to choose being like a farm the hand, millennium hates dogs and dabbing. <laughs> <laughs> if I post this whole thing on YouTube, that's gonna be the uh the the yeah. YouTube, you know, shocker hook. <laughs> millennium hates dabbing and all dogs ever. <laughs> There we go. We have our title, boys and girls. Thank you very much. Um, okay, cool. Well, that was the first quick bites. That was very exciting. I think those were those were some pretty good. You know, you like good shit. You build it up. You get, you give them some some easy you know soft balls, and then you hit them where it hurts, bro. Dabin's never gonna talk to you ever again. <laughs> oh God. Um. Okay. So. I have this ne an another segment that I wanted to try to figure out, but I didn't think that, you know, it made sense to have pictures for it or anything. So you're going to be my guinea pig right now. You're my guinea pig for this whole thing right now. Cool. You know? Do it up. Yeah, I know. You sound so excited and not like you're about to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, why did I agree to this, dude? <laughs> Um, no, I'm enjoying this, dude. I don't have fucking discussions with ever, anyone right now. Honestly, I, the reason that I decided to do this more as like a podcast episodic instead of just how I've been doing it on my radio show is on the radio show, it always had to be these super short interviews and we would always go over anyways, but I would like be speeding through stuff. But like we would get into such cool conversations that I was like, yo, like fuck the rest of the radio part like the radio show can be the radio show but i feel like you know mm. kids fans whatever enjoy this stuff and you know they get to hear way more you know personal cool stuff and also for us like this is the only way i've really gotten to talk to my homies you know what i yeah, mean dude, totally. like it's either this or video games you know what i'm saying and video games is like it's nice and fun but it's not like actual yeah, you're not sitting there having conversations about life. You're like, yeah. You're like, yo, dude, he's one shot, bro. He's one shot, <laughs> dude. You, you fucking got him, bro. Um, okay, so this next section is something that I think I'm going to call fight or bite. And it's kind of like a swipe left, swipe right scenario, right? It. And it doesn't need to be quite as much of a like quick fire thing, although I'm sure it will be. Um, but I want I want some thought behind it. I want to okay. hear your opinion on these topics. So, fight or bite, number one, drum and bass. So am I saying... Fight is like you don't really like it. Bite is like, yes. You want it. Got it, got it, got it. I love drum and bass. I mean, I think it's like... It's a shame that it's not... It doesn't really have a foothold here. Yeah, because it's definitely like the the top tier drum and bass guys, I think, are the best electronic music producers, like in terms of actual clarity and like the song is perfectly produced. But I think that's part of the problem, dude. I think about this shit all the time, bro. And it's like, you know, e even in American music, we have that same kind of thing where it's like all about the chin scratchers and like you have to have the perfect yeah. kick and snare and you have to, you know do you have to sound design your own drums and you know use serum to make a hi-hat and blah 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 i think that's just part of the produce like if you're getting into drum and bass that's generally why like i'd say that's a generalization i'd say 80 percent of people that are getting into it want to learn how to make the best sounding shit yeah but like i think that there is such a possibility for drum and bass to be such a massive massive i think in like, a different like not in the way it is now. Exactly. It has it has to be totally genericified, if that's a word. <laughs> no, totally. You know, like not not in a bad way either. It just needs to, like I don't. I'm not saying Flume's new drum and bass ish song is generic by any means, but it's simple to wrap your head around. It's not like noisia fucking insanity. You know. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't want to. I don't want to give away too much stuff, but I've been toying around with something that's kind of and like i really hate using this example but it's the best way to describe it is you know what i want to do is create like the jack you of drum and bass yeah, you know what i that'd mean be sick. where it's like i mean i think you could easily put some pop punk shit into like drum and bass aspects too yeah i mean i think those two things could actually work for them. If, yeah if i was 
like if I were to produce it and try to make something new, that's what I would try. I mean, yeah, so much of that stuff is at 174, anyways. Like Full I've been, time? Yeah. I've been, I've been writing, you know, metal shit just for fun on my own, you know, with like drum yeah. machines and, and, you uh-huh. know, some other crazy, but like real full on metal records and half the shit that I read is at 174. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and then, I, I personally like half, I like the vibe of halftime. Just like it hits me harder. Mm-hmm. I like listening to drum and bass, especially like liquid or like cone sound. Yeah. Just like, cause it's amazing music. It's, it's, it's so good. It's yeah. so fucking good, and it, it I think it deserves much more of a foothold in the states. And who knows, maybe we'll make it happen. You never know. Yeah, I think it has. I think it could definitely have a shot. Yeah. Uh, yes, Graham, absolutely. Bensley, Dimension, two of the best drum and bass producers in the game. Um, I mean, okay, so but before we move on, more on your point about you know pop punk and drum and bass. I mean, think about groups like Pendulum, who are yeah. like almost like an arena rock band. But also drum and bass. Like, it's totally it's totally a fucking thing. It can definitely fucking happen. It's like, yeah. it, you know, I mean... I mean, like, Island. What was it? Island Part 2? That's, like, a pretty EDM-sounding song, too. Yeah. Totally. I think if it, if it went that way and you have crazy, catchy melodies and sounds that are just, like, a little bit familiar, I think it would. 100%. Okay. Next up on Fighter Bite, I know what you're going to say already, but I just want to hear it from... The horse's mouth. I want you to explain yourself. Okay. Warzone. Uh, bite. And no, no, I meant fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Punch I mean, Warzone in the face. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I, I think it's cool. I think it's in round recently. Uh, you sure. want to say that one more time? You just uh. Yeah, I glitched out. Yeah. Are we good now? Yep, you're good. In the realm of Call of Duties, I think it's the best one of recent yeah. Call of Duties. Um, I really did like. I didn't ever get into the ranked version of it, but uh-huh. I like playing it for like longer than a week, which is normally how long I like playing Call of Duty. I hated Call of Duty games my entire life. I was always yeah. a Halo guy. Um, I liked the World War Two ones back in the day. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. I, I love. I'm like a geek on World War. II so do you? Do you fuck with battle or uh, what's it called? Battlefield. Yeah, I like all that. Yeah, I I never liked Battlefield. I never liked COD. I only liked like Halo, which is probably why I gravitated to games like Overwatch more that weren't as like you know realistic and were more you know like bright and fun and happy. Which is yeah. also a reason I really like Valorant because it is super competitive, but also doesn't you know like. When, yeah, I'm the opposite. I love fucking real. Like, like Tarkov is as real as it gets. Yeah, and maybe that's it's why like, I hate it so much. I just get yeah. so, I just get so like, like anxious. And oh, I have, dude, I, I feel like I, I have, that. I, I have like a huge problem seeing, like, especially in Call of Duty. Um, I haven't played enough Tarkov to really, um, you know, say if this is true or not. But like. In COD and PUBG, um, yeah. especially PUBG even, like when you're trying to pick someone out of a field and they're like hundreds of yards away, I like I can't even fucking see them, dude. I can't even see them. Like my eyes don't pick up the character in that giant field. Meanwhile, you know, if if it's a game that's a little bit more like stylized and cartoony, yeah. um, I it's it's like night and day like my I can like Fortnite for example I hate Fortnite I don't like playing that's it That's so interesting. I'm the opposite. Okay. I'm totally the opposite. I don't know why. I feel like it's just Yeah, I, it's just a personal preference thing, I guess. Um yeah, I still yeah, haven't, I mean I I haven't played like any Tarkov and I don't think I ever will. Maybe no, now I mean, that there's a white like stuff, It maybe now This that, is the time. There's a yeah. white right now. Yeah. So is that is has it like is it happened? Yeah, or, it happens, I think, every six months because this game is going to be in beta pretty much for all eternity. Right. And they just wipe your account, which is great, actually, because you start with zero. It's fun. Yeah, so then everyone is kind of... It, it's almost like when they reset ranks in like a competitive game. And then it's like yeah. everyone's on the same playing field. But it's even better because everyone starts with nothing. And in, in nothing, Tarkov, yeah. you, you know, you like amass your, you know... Yeah, you don't have shit. Everybody's going to be running around with the same thing, and it's just, like, pretty even playing field. And I just, I really like in Tarkov the introduction of really 
it's pretty good AI. And yeah. like there's tier of AI. There's there's like the basic scavs, which are just like easy as shit to kill. But then there's the bosses that is like are better than players. And it's yeah. I feel like that's a new introduction to a type of like survival game that that's actually really yeah, it is it is cool cuz I mean, dude, if uh, I played Fortnite recently on the bus tour cuz you mm-hmm. know, um Abstract was just getting into gaming and he only had a fucking iPad and you can play Fortnite on an iPad yep. while yep. I'm on a computer and someone else is on a Mac and whatever, we all could play Fortnite together. That is one really really cool thing about the game, I will say. Yeah, it's huge. Um but because Habby had a new account and I never played we literally were in games where like we were the only human players and it was all bots and like really? they literally just like sit there and don't even shoot at Fuck you. That. Yeah. Like I, I, I like a little bit of a challenge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like just like a pinch. Um, the gear aspect of Tarkov is cool. Cause like I'm getting all nerded out now. <clears throat> it's all real. Like all of the attachments, all of the like barrel, yeah. like which is more in depth than anything. All of the ammo types, it's all like real companies, real world shit. That's crazy. So you're actually like gaining knowledge if you are into like guns. Weapons. Yeah. 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 That's tight. I can definitely see where the allure there is, you know, especially yeah. like, uh, you know, like my homie Jared, who like, you know, he was like a, he like, I can't remember what he, he did, but like, you know, he, I always see him out like shooting with like Marines and shit. Like yeah. he's like all about that shit and he loves Tarkov and it makes sense, totally. you know, because I mean, that's like his shit. Um, I, and I don't really care about any of it. I mean, guns, you know, can be cool. I've definitely shot guns that, you know, are, are crazy and it's tight, but I'm not yeah. like, you know, all like nerded out on it. You know what I mean? Totally. But yeah, I that I Go didn't phases. I didn't actually really know that, so that's actually cool. Okay, final fighter bite, and this one is a bit of a controversial topic. Oh, okay, hit me. Road raves. Road raves. Yeah, uh, probably fight. Yeah, I low key am going to have to agree with you there. Um, no disrespect I, uh, to to anyone who's doing them. You know. Totally. Totally. No, I mean. Especially for people, uh, yeah. I think at this point in time, we should try everything. Yeah. Would I want to go attend. Hell no. Would you want to play? No, not at all. Yeah. So just. In- I mean, I I'm like, I feel like that's also kind of a part of like the whole uh, playing shows on uh, even on Twitch, whereas like. Yo, I'm the same way, dude. There's a ton of stuff that's like, there's a ton of reasons why I maybe should do it. But I mean, I'm like a sober dude who's been sober eight years and I get my energy from a crowd. Like I get my, all my high from like playing to fans that are there. And it's like, I, I just don't feel really comfortable with myself. Just like in front of nobody at this point. It's weird. I feel like it's kind of selfish, but. Yeah. I mean, I or in front of a car where you get zero reaction except a honk. It just feels like, like I've played shows where I've went from a hundred people in the room to zero, and it's the worst feeling ever. I just yeah, feel like it's, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I did a couple, you know, live stream shows and whatever, and like, a, I'm I'm literally sitting there by myself, so all I do is play house music because that's the only yeah. thing I enjoy DJing by myself. Like, there's no way I'm playing like a tear out dubstep set. Yeah. In, in like my backyard with like totally. my dogs walking around you know what i mean yeah. like i just can't do it you know whatever um but yeah also it's just like i i can't get into it i don't look like i'm having fun you know because yeah. i'm not i'm not really having fun mm-hmm. like it's it's and i'd rather just be putting all of that time like i have to like making as much like i'm making more music than i think i've ever i i 100 percent, dude and it's so fun like i just feel like i have zero distraction i just get to come into the studio and peace out of this whole situation that's going man i'm so glad you said that because i've been saying it so much i've been saying it on stream i've been saying it to you know people that i talk to to joanne whatever like yes the live stream shows are cool yes people are getting tons of views because of it and blah 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 blah, whatever yeah but 
I would rather, you know, be spending my energy the way that I am. Like you said, I've definitely been writing more music and more like better music than I have mm-hmm. in years. I feel like personally, we'll see how yeah. everyone else feels about it. Um, <laughs> Same. Uh, but also like, you know, I've gotten to put tons of time and effort into doing this shit and like other things that I'm really passionate about that like could like be much more beneficial in the future. Whereas yeah. I feel like the whole like, you know, live stream sets, road raves, whatever, it's very like here and now. And it's 100%. like, you know, when when everything is back to normal, like no one's going to care to watch live stream sets, in my opinion. I know there are people that obviously feel. I think, well, actually, I I might, I think there might actually be a new part. I think the the sickest part about all this stuff that's happening is like, the whole SoundCloud generation that's kind of faded out a bit. I feel like this could potentially be a new way to get to hear new, new music yeah, and new find new people you really enjoy, which is sick. Like for all the people like starting out and getting some momentum, I think it's absolutely, you should do whatever you possibly can. Oh yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. And I think that there, yeah. I think there, there will be a time and a place for live stream shows. I think it's really cool that everyone has access to them and especially Mm -hmm. that people who, you know, maybe can't go to shows or like, you know, maybe they have social anxieties or something that prevents them from going to live events has this as an option now. And I think that there will be some, even when things are back to normal, there will be some live streamed, you know, events. But like for Mm -hmm. me as a Twitch streamer now, which is something that I consider myself, I mean, I do it three times a week. You know what I'm saying? If all I did was live stream DJ sets, I'm pretty sure that all my fans that were watching me there, once everything opened back up, they would just kind of not keep watching me on Twitch anymore. And then I wouldn't want to keep doing DJ sets on Twitch either because now I'm doing, you know, 15, 20 shows a month. Why the fuck am I going to go do that same shit on the internet? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And it, I mean, it kind of bums me out when I see people saying like, you're not doing it because you're not getting paid and shit like that. It's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not like, if I wanted to, I could do it and get paid by Twitch. Yeah. But it's like, it's literally like, I just don't feel as comfortable doing it. Yeah. I feel like fans relate more with new music than me playing like a a random set that I'm not really passionate about. 100%. And that's a big reason I've decided not to do a bunch of them either is like I'm writing so much no, new music and I don't really feel like I'm ready to play it. Yeah. Oh, so 100%. it's like so it's like why how am I going to be motivated to play songs that I literally just got off a 3 month tour, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I already played all those new songs that are now old. Man. I'm in the same we're in the same boat. Yeah, exactly. So it's like how am I supposed to be excited about playing all this music that people have already heard? how am I supposed to be excited about playing all this music that I'm not nearly as excited about as all the new stuff that I'm writing? Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, there are so many reasons. Um, and you know, the, the only thing I will say is that I know that everyone's going through it right now and times are really tough. And I'm sure that having these live stream festivals and DJ sets help people, you know, uh, let go and kind of forget about all the fucked up shit going on in the world. And that is our, you know, jobs and responsibility as entertainers and musicians. Yeah. Um, but it also has to come from, you know, the right place and it has to feel natural. If you, if, if someone forced you to do it or you felt like you were forced to do it cause you're like, Oh, my fans, you know, really like, if I don't do this, I'm going to be letting all of them down. You're going to fucking half-ass it, and they're not even going to think it's that cool. And then they're going to be like, oh, you know, he just showed up and fucking hit play, didn't even try, whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's uh, – that's uh, that's at least how I feel. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you see people out here, like, Joyride fucking tricking out a, a Jeep and doing this crazy-ass <laughs> DJ set, or, like, Gasly goes so hard on his live stream DJ sets. Like, I just don't have – I. I think it's just a personal, it's way more personal. Yeah, 100%. I think like doing it in front of a camera, you have to be a kind of different type of entertainer. Yeah. Then I think, I I don't know. And that it's not saying that those people are worse or that we're worse. I think it's just like they are more outgoing and able to do that shit. And I feel like I am more 
like I, I don't know. I just don't feel like I have. We're the, a little bit more introverted, maybe. Yeah. Because I mean, that's that's kind of how I feel. Because like you know, while quarantine has been happening, and like my wife is like, "Man, I'm going crazy. I want to go out. I want to go do things. I want to see people." I'm like, "Yo, I'm kind of stoked that I just get to sit in this room all day." Yeah. And like just shut off from the world and do exactly the things I like to do. Um, mm -hmm. Funnily enough, there's a guy in the chat named DJ Kenny D who said, I totally agree. DJing to a camera is a totally different experience compared to having a live audience. Live is way better because of the energy of the crowd. Ironically, DJ Kenny D I found on Twitch because he was doing liquid drum and bass DJ sets. Sick. Um, like I was just, you know, I was done with a, I was done, done with a stream one day. And I was like, okay, who should we raid? And a bunch of people were on. And Kenny was just on my front page for whatever reason. And I was like, hmm, let's just go click into this guy. And he was playing like sick ass liquid drum and bass. And he had this crazy room all set up. And I was like, yo, this shit is hilarious, but also incredible. Like just like all the different angles he had and like all the emojis yeah. popping off. I was like, yo, this shit is, um, this is exactly what I want to see. And I think Kenny has nailed it where like yeah. you know his sets feel really really fun to watch and he you know looks like he's enjoying it because he's a dj um but even he says that you know doing it live is there's no comparison yeah. um so yeah uh stoyo love 23 i'm gonna let you go after this but i want to hear your opinion on this uh, I've kept you for a really long time. Thank you for, no, for trudging through I'm this with me, through. man. This is great. I um, feel like it's a good chance to hear, like, for some fans, too, to hear, like, just straight up how I'm feeling about some of it. Yeah, I, I, I'm i sure. Especially and, that last question, because it gets asked so much. I, I do. I, I always I, feel like I'm letting like I'm letting people down, but it's like I just don't feel good about it. Yeah, and that's that's what I was saying before, dude. You can't, like... It's the same way when you write music. You can't write music to appease fans, you know, because then yeah. it's not going to be good music. It's not going to be music that you care about. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So, Stoyo Love 23 said, Festivals are the best, but 20,000 plus crowds are going to have to stop. Do you agree or disagree? Because I have this feeling that eventually, not that long from now, but more than six months from now things are going to go back to normal and in my opinion i think festivals are going to become bigger than ever there's going to be more yeah, people going too. to them than ever is he saying that that it's going to be like government sanctioned twenty thousand crowds like i think i think i think that their point is just like these massive massive festival crowds where everyone's slammed together aren't going to be a thing anymore and oh, they're gonna absolutely be a thing. I, th I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that I they're, think they're I, yeah. think, I mean, as long as everyone kind of gets their jobs back and starts being able to like make, you know, make get by, I think it's gonna be the first outlet people are gonna do. Yeah. And it's not even so much about that. I think it's more like from a safety standpoint, you know what I mean? Like, are, you know, like, do I think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Or not even that, but just, like, do you think that, you know, in the future, in the near future, like, obviously shows are going to start coming back. Someone in the chat has said multiple times, Dance Festopia got approved to happen in September, which... No shit. I... Really? Uh, I mean, I would take that with a giant grain of salt. Yeah, that would be mind-blowing to me. Yeah. I don't suspect anything coming back until fucking january february probably yeah and honestly that's optimistic yeah unless we get unless there's some sort of treatment or treatment would be number one for sure and then well, uh, and that's and that's what we're waiting for you know what i mean if yeah. if a vaccine does come and there's one fast track right now um yeah if that does happen i uh, and here is my question you know what i mean this is what i'm really trying to get at in a hypothetical world where there is a vaccine and everyone is chill to do whatever. Do you think that, you know, either the government isn't going to allow things and they're going to put in restrictions that forever alters how music festivals and clubs and everything are run? And or do you think that people are going to be so scared that, you know, just by fear alone, 
the numbers at shows and festivals and whatever dwindle to a point where everyone has, you know, safe distance space. Because my opinion is if, you know, let's say that, uh, you know, Coachella was 120,000 people a day. I'm not sure exactly yeah. what it is, right? But that's just a number. I feel like when Coachella comes back for real and everything is on, you know what I mean? And there's a yeah. vaccine or whatever and everything is chill. Um, I think it'll go from 120,000 to 200,000 a day. Yeah, I mean, you know whatever what I mean? the capacity can be, I think it will be fixed. Yeah. But I, I do also think there'll probably be new regulations in terms of like probably more temperature gauges and like more. I, I mean, I don't think there'll be, I don't know. I think it depends on the state too. Yeah. You know, I like, agree. I think California is definitely probably one of the more strict, like, cause you guys still have strict stay at home orders, right? Nothing is open. Yeah. And it's, how is it in Denver? Way more relaxed. Yeah. But yeah. you said golf courses aren't open. No golf is tennis. tennis oh, tennis uh, is closed. Yeah, the gyms are closed, and and there's not many outdoor co- courts. Right. But uh, uh, I guess okay. Yeah, because there's like some the, non-essential the... businesses open now too. Mm-hmm. I it, mean, I walk it, around. There's like probably fifty-fifty with masks on. That's crazy, and yeah. I mean it's the same in California, dude. Especially down in Orange County, no one gives a shit about anything. It honestly, it really pisses me off. Yeah. Um but I mean, you know, I think California is now in phase two or three, which means that some restaurants are now able to be open with 50% capacity, which is a huge step. Um, yeah. There are uh, lots of non-essential stores that are opening that right. uh, you can't go in, but like you can, you know, like do the whole like get pick up thing. Exactly. Um, but I mean, I think, you know, as as strict as California is, we're also one of the biggest states. We're also one of the most populated states. Yeah. Um, so we have to be super, super gnarly about this shit, and it's been paying off. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, L.A. has been crushing it as far as, you know, slowing the 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 virus. And um, the, only, the only potential issue I see with that tactic is if it, you know, it, all the other stuff is going to start opening and California might be hit behind and California doesn't have nearly like close to herd immunity, like the rest that went through it. I mean, I don't know. I'm very mixed. I right. don't know. Like, I don't know what the right thing is in this situation. Yeah. Cause I mean, stuff like this has happened in the past. Like I was reading this rant about, uh, the, in, I think it was 78 or 68, the Hong Kong flu. Yeah. And it happened, I think it, uh, don't quote my numbers, but I, I'm pretty sure there were like 150,000 deaths from it right. in America. And it's the same summer of Woodstock and it was never shown in any media. Crazy. So it's like, it's like, I, I mean, I know shit like this happens in the world. But that was also I, in a in a time where it was a lot harder for information to travel. You have to think. So, you know what I mean? fucking yeah. hippies that were going to Woodstock. I mean, Woodstock, we talk about it as, you know, the mecca of festivals. Yeah. That place was a fucking disaster, bro. Oh, terrible, dude. It was the, Needles on the ground. Was dude, so fucking shit was on fire. People were just shitting anywhere yeah. they could find, like, some dirt. Like, yo, it was, it was, bro, like, yeah. It, we're, we live in a different time. You know what I mean? Somebody mentioned Arizona. That shit's crazy. Have you? Do you have any friends that are like, I know a lot of people that have just flown to Arizona to go party because everything's yep, open. 100%. That's well, what makes me know that everything is going to sell like when it comes back. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I know people that have been going to Lake Havasu and they would come back and I talk to them and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like going out to Lake Havasu and partying and shit. And yeah. they're like, yo, it's so hot in Lake Havasu basically all year round. They have zero cases. No shit. Zero. <laughs> That's crazy. Zero. And I mean, I don't know if all of, you know, Arizona is the same, but I feel like their cases are probably very, very low. And especially now that it's getting towards the summer, um, you know, the virus obviously doesn't do well in heat. But that's yeah. also something that they've talked about that's going to be a huge problem because the second that the heat goes away, if we don't have no, a vaccine, right. if we don't have shit figured out, it's going to come back second. and then it's going to be worse. And then 
So that's my whole opinion. That's my thing is, is if it, if that happens, if the wave second wave happens, like, are we going to just revert? Like everything will be open by then. And then we close it all back down and we do this again. Yeah. And that's what I'd like to avoid. I would rather be much, I would rather err on the side of safety and be yeah. locked down a little too long and, you know, have things, you know, go on like this a little bit longer than maybe they even need to. Mm -hmm. If it would ensure that some bullshit like that doesn't happen again, because who gives a shit about having three or four months of freedom if this shit is going to come back, possibly be way fucking deadlier, and then yeah. everyone's going to have to shut down everywhere, bro. Yeah, then, but everyone, everyone would have to act like California. The whole I know. world. That's what I'm saying. That's the problem. It's not going to happen. Yeah, but what... There's a possibility. You got Georgia, and you got like all this other shit already opening. Yeah, but I'm so they're already gonna fuck the plan up. I know, and that's the problem. But I'm <laughs> saying, what if it comes back and it's way more deadly, and it's yeah, way it and the contagion contagion level, the virality of it, whatever, is way higher. Then it doesn't matter how you feel. You're gonna have to fucking lock down. Because then it's not like, you know, oh, it's not affecting me. It's not blah, 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 blah. In my state, it's fine. It's like, no, shit is fucked everywhere, dude. So yeah. it's like, you know, and this is all hypothetical, obviously. But like, if I'm, us... I'm very curious to see. I mean, I, yeah, I just hope it, it all depends on vaccine or treatment. Yeah. And I mean, like, like I said before, because Logan said it'll take over a year just to create a vaccine. A vaccine has been fast tracked for approval, which means... And that was a while ago when that was announced. So that means that we could have a vaccine at the beginning of 2021. And if that's yeah, true... Yeah, potentially even sooner. Moderna, this pharmaceutical company, had uh, they announced last week, early last week, this is the reason the whole start stock market went like crazy up last week was because Moderna announced that they had a successful trial um, in terms of uh, they they successfully gave patients antibodies. Right. So they, the, that's step one. The patients held the antibodies and kept them. Now they have to introduce the virus to the antibodies. Crazy. So that, but that's literally single-handedly that made the market go like insane. Wow. That's nuts. Um, just to be clear, Alpha is 91. Early 2021 is not literally a year. It's actually a lot closer to six months from now because we are literally in a couple days going to hit the halfway point of a year. Yeah. Um, so um, Ardal99 said, are you a big investor? Um, and I, you know, I'm, I was trying to let you go, <laughs> but I do, I do want to kind of pick your brain about that because I had this whole conversation the other day uh, with one of my friends telling me that I was a fucking idiot for not investing in the stock market, especially right now. My yeah. argument is I don't know enough about the stock market. I don't like putting my money where I don't have knowledge. I don't like just telling someone who's a good stock in investor or whatever, just like, here, take my money, do whatever you want with it because, you know, you know what you're fucking doing. I like to have control over everything in my life. And, you know, like whether it's like I don't like to skydive, I'll never do it because I'm not in control. It's some dude who's pulling a chute who has, <laughs> you know, control over whether I live or die. But you put me on a dirt bike and I have control, I'll do a bunch yeah. of stupid shit. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing with stocks. So um, what about you? I I held off on and like... I have some family that's like really knowledgeable about it all. So I take like a lot of advice from them. Uh -huh. I've learned a lot. Honestly, I've learned more the past like six months than I ever knew. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I waited cause I kind of knew like I, I've never had money to invest until well, now. Right. Yeah. Same. And then, so like I, the whole time, like the past two years I've been like the market has just been going up, up, up. I feel like at some point it's going to drop. Yeah. And so I just waited for that moment. And then right when this stuff, I've been investing like every month. Sick. And I, and now I know a lot more. Like, I got, it's crazy. I, I got in on the like Moderna, which is that pharmaceutical company. Right. Like, and it's got done like 175% increase. Wow. Which is absurd. Nice. And so like all that, it, but it's so much luck, dude. It's like gambling. Yeah, it is. And that's, and that's the thing. If I'm going to gamble with my money, I want to be the one gambling. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to give like a ton of money to some dude, and then all of a sudden he's just like, "Oh, hey, by the way, I kind of, I kind of screwed the pooch, man." And you know, like your yeah. money's gone because that totally. can happen with stocks. You hear about it oh, yeah. on the news, dude. So like, I have you know, I have CDs and money markets and stuff that's you know, safe and whatever. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's I mean, time right, for me to do some research. Yeah, it's definitely probably sooner rather than later at this point. Yeah. Of like, of right now, all my stuff has come up except airlines. From when I invested, I lost money. Yeah, so but airlines if you invest, are pretty close. If you invest now in now airlines. Now is a great, yeah. I think a good airlines and it's like you know the the thing that i do know about stocks is you know the famous buffett quote which is you just invest in what you believe in and it's like we are going to have to use and not just us but so yeah. many industries completely rely on airplanes you know what i mean yeah. so unless someone comes up with a fucking teleporter in the next year airlines are going to go back up you know what i mean it's yeah. not it's not a matter of if it's when you know and i'm doing stuff like i'm putting stuff in and i'm not touching it for like 10 years right so i'm not trying to like day trade and shit yeah i feel that um okay i'm so gonna let cool. you go now you've been here for a long ass time bro that what? was sweet thank you so much for hanging out man i really enjoyed it me too that was a great ass time you know by this point we would have been done with this interview so long ago and then i would have been playing a bunch of music and then it would have been a static screen and people would have been like eh you know whatever but people got to you know, experience this whole fucking journey we just went on, man. That was, uh, Shit. that was, uh, yeah, a whole thing. So, yes, the, the podcast will, sections of this, bits of it will be on the radio show tomorrow. Uh, you'll also be able to catch it as a VOD on Twitch, uh, basically right after this. And then you'll also be able to get it on Spotify podcasts and I believe Sick. Apple podcasts, uh, uh, why don't you uh, just give everyone your your tags, you know, just in case they for some reason aren't following you already. What mine? Yeah, uh, it's like Adelina mu Adelium music. Adelina music. Adelina. <laughs> Do you know who you are? Who yeah. are you, dude? Right. Who well, are you? I forget you? which ones are Adelina music and are official. See, I, you know what? I'm actually really glad that you pointed that out because at one point I had the opportunity to take over at Jaws on Twitch. Or sorry, not Twitch, I Twitter. I didn't do it. On Twitter. And I said no yeah. because everything else was Jaws official. And then I would have just had one thing that was just Jaws and it would have screwed everything up because now you're oh. here and you're like, oh, something's Alenium Music, something's Alenium Official. Like, isn't ugh, I just get to say... Actually, everything, everything is at Alenium Music except for Twitch. Twitch is at Alenium Official. Got it. So, anywhere you go at Elenium Music, except for Twitch, um, you can find <laughs> Elenium on Twitch. You can find him at twitch.tv slash Elenium Official. Um, he doesn't stream as much as me, but that's okay. Maybe this will motivate him. Maybe he'll get back on the stream grind. I know everyone will watch you play Escape from Tarkov, bro. I know they Dude, will. Dude, my PC doesn't fucking handle streaming Tarkov. You you never got a second PC? No, I haven't yet. Oh my gosh. Okay, you know what? This is something we can talk about off stream. I'll 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 yeah. help you out. I <laughs> I will be your I will be your stream guru. We will figure it out. Um everyone put some big GGs in the chat for Nick. Thank you very much for hanging out, man. Thanks, that was guys. a fucking blast. That was nice. Later, bro. Peace out, chat. All right, guys, that is it. That was In the Tank with my guest, my lovely guest, Millennium Nick, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you guys for listening and also watching if you happen to be watching this back on YouTube. Whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're listening, uh, everywhere that podcasts are available, don't forget, if you want to get in on the action, if you want to be a part of In the Tank as it happens live, uh, join me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Jaws Official. There will be a link below. Uh, Thursdays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come hang out. I actually stream three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 5 p.m. every single time. Uh, but Thursdays, podcast, come hang out. Uh, ask your favorite artists or, you know, people outside of music, whoever I'm interviewing. Get to ask them questions. Ask me questions. Uh, get your voice heard. 
on the podcast. It's a bunch of fun. I hope I see you there next time. Until then, I hope you have a great rest of your week, rest of your month, rest of your year. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive. I'll see you on the next one.